Hi, this is Ann Gunn. I teach at Northwest Community College District in Sheridan, and um, I have a video today, I'm making a video today to introduce you to an outreach um, activity that I use in various settings. Um, it's my Draw Flags 2 activity, and um, I use this for two or three different purposes. It's a nice way to introduce this particular online program environment called Replit. Um, it's a nice way to show people what coding, fun things you can do with coding, and um, it certainly gives people some sense of JavaScript coding. It could also be used to integrate um, with a geography or social studies unit at probably, probably fifth grade and above since it's about drawing flags. So um, when you first show up on Replit, um, with the URL that goes with this activity, you end up with a screen like this. And um, I'm doing this in a browser where I don't log on very often, and therefore I don't have an account. And um, for this demo, I'm gonna show you that you don't even need an account on Replit in order to do this work. Um, the only problem is if you don't have an account, then it's a nice little activity, but you lose all your work at the end of it. If you create a free account on Replit, um, when you, when you make the change I'm about to make that, that does what's called forking my code, then you'll end up with a copy of your own that will be saved in your account. Um, but for this particular video, I'm going to simply start making changes and you're gonna see the name change to something really strange. Um, so what's happening here is this shows that this belongs to me and that its title is Draw Flags 2. If I hit the run button, never a bad thing to do when you're starting. You can see that there are some directions here and I'm getting a, um, a white rectangle and a red circle. And if I go to drawflags.js, the instructions for the activity are here. Um, this is JavaScript code and it, um, it's intended to be relatively English-like. We're creating a rectangle, um, we're setting it to white, we're asking it to draw itself. We're creating a circle, we're setting its color to red, we're asking it to draw itself. And the thing about that is that you can, with simply rectangles and circles, um, you can draw a whole lot of different flags. Now there's also sample code in the bottom to do um, two more complicated uh, objects, triangles and shapes, but we're not gonna do that in this video. Um, what I am gonna do is, just neaten this a little bit, um, just widen this out a little bit, make it so we can see more space here. And um, I'm going to pause the recording while I draw a few things on here, because there are just a few things you need to know about this canvas element for the, for the positioning to make sense. And I draw so painfully slow with the tools on here that I don't want to make you watch me do that. So I'm going to pause my video. And I'll be back as soon as I get a few things jotted down. Okay, so I've, I've drawn some things with my recording tool on top of um, the screen here that I just want to point out. Um, most folks who, um, who teach in high school and many, many students think of space in terms of a Cartesian plane where you've got, you've got two axes that are intersecting and zero zeros in the middle. Okay, that is so not what happens on the canvas. So we're gonna get rid of that. Okay, what happens on the canvas is much more like um, a spreadsheet. It starts in the upper left-hand corner. Um, so if you, this is a spreadsheet, this first box here would be um, A1, okay? The coordinates here at the upper left corner are zero, zero, and the numbers get bigger as you go down and to the right. So when we set the location of our white rectangle at 100, 100, we're putting the upper left corner there. When we set the location of our circle at 500, 150, we're putting the center of the circle there. If you want to move the circle onto the rectangle, you have to decrease the y, the x value and increase the y value just a little bit. If you want to draw another flag down underneath here, um, 
This is down 100 and the flag is 200 high. So this is 100, 300. Your next flag would have to start at about a Y value of 400. Okay, so I'm gonna pause one more time, erase all this, and then just show you a couple things about how the code works. Okay, so I've cleaned up the screen and um, the point of this activity is simply to have some fun drawing flags. Um, flags are remarkable um, in terms of, in general, often how simple they are. Um, so for example, the flag of Bangladesh, the flag of Japan are simply a circle inside a rectangle, okay? Um, many flags are either three horizontal rectangles or three vertical rectangles or some combination of those boxes. Um, others um, get arbitrarily kind of complex. Um, certainly the flag of Bahrain can be done with rectangles, triangles. Um, flag of Canada would be much harder to do with just rectangles and triangles, although I suppose you could do it if you were, um, if you were determined enough. Um, but if we get down to say Greece, um, I think Norway is a good example. Um, where did Norway go? Yeah, Norway and Iceland are really good examples. So you can work on your computational thinking skills by taking very simple shapes and figuring out how to um, overlap them in such a way that they create a flag. So going from, from a white rectangle with a red circle next to it to the flag of Japan uh, is, let me see if I can do this. So if this is 100 and the flag is 300 long, then we'd need 150. So the middle of this flag XYZ is 250, I think. And the middle of the flag here, if this is 100 and it's 200 tie, then the, the middle of the flag vertically is 300. I rarely get this the first time, but let me see if I can do this. Okay, so 100. Huh. Oh, right, 100 more than 100. See, I rarely get this right. But see, I don't break anything either. And there you have the flag of Japan. Um, one of the things that's really interesting is that you can, and this is not any particular flag, but um, it's remarkable the shapes that you can make with just a circle. So if I have another circle on top of this one that's just nudged over maybe 50 and it's white, I suddenly get a crescent moon. So it must be need to be nudged over more like 75. So spoiler alert, that's how you make a moon. Um, and you can do, um, there's a URL in here for the flags of sovereign states. There's a URL in here for um, the flags of Native American tribes. Um, most of which are actually too complicated to do. Um, the, a lot of them have images in them that um, you can't do with simple blocks. Um, but let's see, this is, this is drawing very slowly today. Let me see if I can find Sac and Fox. Yeah, the Sac and Fox tribe works pretty well. You can certainly do the backgrounds of most of these flags. Um, and, then, and then it would be possible to insert an image, but the code that I have here is not set up to do that. So um, the trick with this is, of course, I know how to code and I know what not to, not to change. If you, um, if as you're typing code in, you forget something like um, a double quote that should be there, Okay, chances are what happens is your flag simply stops to draw. Okay, so I've broken my code. Okay, haven't broken Replit, haven't broken the internet, simply broke my code. And down here I have an error message that says, mm, I think something's wrong. And this is, this is the tricky part. 
This is the name of the file where JavaScript thinks there's an error. This is the line number 13, okay, which we agree with because I just broke it intentionally on line 13. And so if I put that back, then my code works again. What you mostly ignore is the last number, which is the character where it thinks there's a problem. Um, sometimes JavaScript can get that exactly, sometimes not. And, and if you can't see an error on the line that JavaScript thinks is wrong, look for um, look for the line above. Okay. So for example, a missing parentheses. Let's see, first of all, let me make sure my code is fixed. Always test, okay. So now if I take this parentheses out, say I was retyping that line and I forgot to put the parentheses in or I just um, fat fingered the parentheses out. Okay, I also have a, um, a problem. Again, my flags don't draw. That's kind of JavaScript's thing is if it can't run, it can't run and, and it just does the best it can, which is in this case, paint the background. Um, and here in this particular browser, I'm getting quite a specific error message pointing at line 12, okay? Um, different browsers run different JavaScript engines. Different JavaScript engines will give you better or worse messages. So you have your little message box window down here. You have your drawing surface here. And then basically the, the point of this activity is simply to go through these and um, you can just pick ones out or I have some um, I have some flags of increasing difficulty here. Um, there is a link here for how you do for the names of colors that are available to you. And then um, I also have down here some spare code to do triangles and um, shapes, which are essentially closed polygons. But um, you really don't need any of this to be able to do a good half hour, 45 minutes of coding, creating different flags. And um, I'm always impressed by what people are able to create. Uh, so I hope that helps and um, I hope you enjoy the activity.